Hi, it's another cut on Camera Lounge, brought to you by Camera Joints Nigeria's number one camera store. And in this set of interview series, we're talking to leading Nigerian photographers. And they're talking about the business of photography, the art of photography, and everything in between. Today, I have another photographer. He's a fine art portrait and commercial photographer. You'll meet him in just a moment. Lights, camera, action. All right, welcome back, photographers, creatives. Welcome with me, Tosin Junaid. Hello. Tosin, it's nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I must thank you because we literally dragged Tosin Junaid <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of honeymoon. But he told me it's not yet honeymoon. <laughs> it's just a stowaway for now that he's going to really get back to uh, honeymoon. He just got married. Congratulations. Thank you Tosin. so, so much. Thank you so much. So, Tosin. <clears throat> Fine art, photography, where did it all start? Oh, from the beginning, beginning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I was born here in Lagos in 1992. So I'm 29 years old. I was born, um, my dad was a police officer at the time. Uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, so she basically raised us. At the time, it was two boys, but I got a younger brother afterwards. So uh, yeah, it was just <laughs> us here, and then um, we moved to Ibadan. Uh, school, university, um, I was sort of like the brilliant one, so they would say, you know, if you're good, um, science is already. So I did, um, I wanted to do computer engineering, but there was no computer engineering in uh, most schools. So, you know, someone advised I do electrical electronics engineering. That was a modern course. So, because I knew I wanted to work with computers, and I sort of liked the idea of working with computers then. So, uh, and I, I still do though, but that was just Photoshop and, <laughs> and Lightroom. But sometime in between one of the Plenty Astro strikes, I think it was around 400 level, we had home for like six, six to seven months, you know. My roommates had picked up photography as a hobby. You know, nothing serious, just the basic stuff. And then when he came back to school, you know, he had the camera with him and I was like, guy, the, the goal is not this one, the goal is to work in, in Shell or somewhere. <laughs> You know, one of all these big engineering companies then, but uh, I sort of picked interest because it was like my really, really close friend. And, you know, I would follow him to shoots. And then, you know, I started to edit for him. So he would just give me pictures, you know. Uh, in the past, in secondary school, you know, I used to, I was a bit artistic. So I used to draw a little, you know, draw some comics and do all of that. So I like to play with colors, all of those things. And then he, uh, he would shoot pictures and just give me to edit. So I'll play around in, I think it was um, Picasso at that time and some other softwares yeah. that we don't go near anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I'll play around with the colors, try and, you know, make this part black and white, make this part color, just try to be creative, you know. Yeah. There was the creative in me, but I, I didn't know at the time, but I was trying to, it was really trying to come out. And then, you know, when I wouldn't have pictures to edit anymore, I will just grab his camera, go outside and shoot some kind of landscape or do light painting, do whatever, just try and experiment with with photography so I could come back and edit. So it was always, you know, editing was the starting point. It was always so mm -hmm. that I could come back to edit those pictures and try and see how I can change the picture from whatever I shot it to yeah. something, you know, larger or bigger. So more like you forward integrated into taking pictures. Yeah. <coughs> so um, we did that for a while and then, you know, this was in 400 level. And then in 500 level, you know, I, I got my first camera. So it was a Nikon D300, D300, yes. Uh, think Do I you still it. have it? No, I don't. God bless his soul. <laughs> I don't, but I remember who I sold it to, but I used it till it, till it broke, it, the shutter broke. And every time I shot, the shutter wouldn't come back, <laughs> so we we'll have to open the lens and then hit it. It's <laughs> oh, Okay, wow. so the guy that bought it said he was going to fix it. I don't know if he did, but um, 
Yeah, that was the first camera I bought. It was, I think I bought it for, I remember I bought it for 80,000 Naira at the time. I, the funny thing is that in school, I used to be known for playing the guitar. So I used to play the guitar and I picked up the violin as well. Oh. But yes, a little bit. Mm. And then towards the end, I, I, I remember I had to sell my violin when I was trying to raise money to buy the camera. So I sold my violin for like 12,000. I had this iPod, iPod shuffle. I sold it for about 8,000. I can't imagine how many <laughs> photographers have had to sell something to buy, yeah. buy an equipment. Yeah, so I, I sold a couple of things. I, I was able to gather the 80,000 Naira. We came to Lagos Computer Village here. We went, we bought the camera. What year was this? This was in 2014. So can you tell me, have there been times that you knew you had a set of rules that uh -huh. you're, you're guided by, but somehow you needed to do something and you decided if I don't break these rules, I wouldn't achieve this goal. Oh yeah, yes, of course. So for me, it's like um, maybe the rules I set in my head myself. So it's like if I don't, I don't like to be uncomfortable in terms of like if I don't have enough money to do something, I'll probably not do it. So I think the good example I'll give is when I got my studio and I didn't have enough money or well, I was afraid that I won't be able to pay, make my rent in the next year, All right? So um, it was really like a huge step for me because I was like, how do I go about this? If I, I just decided, you know what, if I can't pay my rent, I'm just going to pack my load and go back to Ibadan. <laughs> but yeah, I remember I, I spoke to a particular photographer, Mufeba Mugwa. She's one of the leading female photographers in the country. And you know, she was like, listen, just... Just get this studio, get the studio ready. You need the space, you need the space to create more for your clients and all. And I was like, hey, oh my God. So, you know, I, I gathered all the money I could at the time, all the money, it was one million at the time. And then I paid my rent, you know. And I remember my very first photo shoot there, there was no AC, it was just, I bought a rechargeable phone that I charged overnight, you know. But, you know, when I look back at that particular period in time, I'm so glad I took that step. Because if I didn't take that step, I don't know, you know, the step I took enabled me to, you know, do so many other things that I didn't, I, you know, that I don't know if I'd, I would have done mm. if I didn't take that particular step. Yeah, this brings me to the uh, role of friendships and communities that mm. you have within your yeah. uh, your practice space. I mean, you talk about what BNB, how okay. she encouraged you to just take the leap. Mm -hmm. Now, mentors play those kinds of roles mm. as well, and we'll talk about mentors and how important they are. But how about, talk to me about the need for friendships and the kind of friendships and relationships that you should have as a photographer. So, I mean, it's very, very important the kind of friendships you have, you know, with fellow photographers or just other creatives generally. So not only photographers. Mm. So, for example, I, I have friends across my industry. So makeup artists, designers, you know, these are the people that, you know, help you and you help them as well. Right. So um, I'll mention someone like Emmanuel Oyeleke. He's somebody that I attended his workshop in 2015. And that was the first time I met him. His workshop cost 50,000 at the time and I couldn't even afford it. I had 25,000. My cousin paid the extra 25,000. But, you know, getting to meet him, attending that workshop was like a, another milestone for me because I, I got to see, OK, this is what is going on. This is that was my first first, you know, I'll say uh, exposure to what was really going on in the photography industry because I was just like an outsider. I just come back to Lagos from school and I was just um, starting to just shoot and put on Instagram. Well, it's, it's really interesting uh, to find out that in a matter of five years or say seven years, your mentor has sort of become your friend, mm. you know, and the, the way I see the bond between you guys, it's really pretty amazing. This stuff. Yeah, so, so it's very, very important the kind of person you are as a photographer. I mean, never mind quality pictures, quality people. How do you handle people? How do you carry yourself? What do you do? What don't you do? You know, at different times of that friendship. So sometimes, you you know, some people just come and they get into your DMs and the way they talk to you, you you know, they're not bad people, but you know how to talk. You know how to... How comport to yourself. Comport yourself. You know, do you understand boundaries? And you know, I can't just do this because I know this person. I have this person's number. It means I can just call them any particular thing. So the way you carry yourself really, really matters. And that's what helps you to form, you know, better relationships with people. And those relationships, trust me, they are, they are gold. And they are worth a lot. You know, I can't start to mention figures, but... My relationship with certain people in the industry have put 
like physical cash and money mm. in my account mm. you know if it's referrals for jobs you know if it is you know so many so many so many things like that let's backtrack and tell me how things happened for you uh whilst you were in school how you started photography and that particular convocation that you were telling me about during my convocation my friends and i decided that you know what we need to make some money <laughs> So we rented yeah. the tents, went to the convocation field, we got the backdrop, we got lights and everything. You know, this is something that had never been done before. What people usually do is just, you know, they just wait and get guys that just shoot you on the field, you know. So we had lights and we had the backdrop and we had stands and everything and we set up that and we, you know, we told people, pay 1,000 naira, we would shoot you and your family, everything. You get all your soft copies. It didn't cost us anything to give them soft copies. So, you know, we had a serious queue. It was crazy. You know, people will for ah, it's my turn, it's not my turn. And we're just three, so two shooters and somebody to write the names down and the Straight numbers. That, yeah. Yeah, but it, it was a it was a really good experience because it shows that, you know, if you give people value, you know, you can get monetary value in return. So, you know, we made some money, we were able to pay for the tents, for the lights rented, and that was when I you know I spent and I got my first my first speed light. The, that experience give you hope or made you feel, oh wow. I'm going to be a photographer. Um, what 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 snapped you into that journey of photography exactly? So I can't say there's a particular moment that snapped me, but what happened was that I was lucky enough to have sort of like a cushion from after school to start life as a photographer. I never worked anywhere apart from during my IT and my service year where I taught at the school. I didn't work anywhere, so it was like straight from school to service year to photography. But the good thing is that my service here was in Ogun State. I was very close to Lagos, so I was able to run around in Lagos. So as at the time, I was still getting some allowance from home, and I was still getting, you know, Malawi, and I was living with my cousin, so I didn't have to feed myself nothing. Yeah, you didn't have so to pay rent. I didn't have to pay rent. <laughs> rent it's is important. important. Yeah, but I... So I had that, that year to really explore photography, you know. It wasn't really a conscious decision not to look for any jobs, per se, but... I didn't get the jobs at the time. So you tried? Uh, I didn't try hard. I didn't try hard because I was doing photography as well. But you know, if someone had offered me and said, Tosin, come and take this, this job and you know, we'll pay you 150,000 naira in 20, 2015, I'd have taken the job. But it would have been a big mistake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, for me though, I know now, I can say that I'm glad I didn't get any jobs at that time. But, you know, what's really stopped me into it, I'll say, you know, I attended a couple of workshops. So, Emmanuel's workshop in 2015, I attended Big H's workshop in Abuja in 2017. So, you know, seeing other people doing photography and hearing, oh, you can actually make this kind of amount. So, me being exposed to what was possible was what made me say, you know what, I'm just going to continue in this. Let's talk about mentorship. Mm -hmm. What would you consider the role of mentors? And I would like you to mention your own mentors as well. Okay. And what impact that has had uh, on your career? Um, okay, so mentors, I would say um, in Nigeria here, I'll say Emmanuel Loyeleke, I'll say Big H Studios in Abuja. They are the two world work I really, really love going, um, starting off as a photographer. And I made, I, made a, I made sure I attended their workshops. So it wasn't just like, oh, send a DM, you're my mentor, can, I, can you mentor me? And the funny thing is that I never actually worked for any of them per se as, as worked in their studios, you know. So it was like I attended Emmanuel's workshop, you know, and I got to learn from him. I got to be around him. You know, of course, he called me to assist for jobs. The same thing with Big H. The story with Big H's workshop was is a very interesting story. I don't know if we have time, but it's a very interesting story. Go ahead. Because um, his workshop cost 100,000 naira and was in Abuja. And it spans over a period of six weeks. So, so not every day, but like uh, two days a week for six weeks. And I think I had 120,000 naira in my account. So I paid for the workshop. I entered God is Good, 8,000 naira to Abuja. And I had about 12,000 naira left on me. That was at the third week, I was out of money. <laughs> I was out of money. I was living with my uncle, out of money. I had a job, a 50,000 naira job in Lagos. So I entered 8,000 naira bus back to Lagos, did the 50K job, entered 8,000 naira job back to Abuja. So that's 16,000 and 50,000 minus 16,000 is what? Um, 34,000, yeah. because I had back in my pocket to finish the workshop. But that class was also very, very good for me because it was more like Big H's class is very encompassing. It's not a master class, it's a whole thing. So from everything about shorter speed to ISO, you know, to 
why why are you even doing this photography you know to the depths of it not just technicalities so it, it really helped me and then also obviously I, I made serious relationships with people in Abuja as well you know you know we're accountable to each other we're able to help each other grow so those mentors Big H and Emmanuel and it's not necessarily in what they say to you sometimes if you're around them and you see how they deal with clients how they work that is even more impacting than anything they can say you know someone like Emmanuel for example you, when you talk about excellence that's him so just being around him is you think about excellence I'll tell a quick story <laughs> I'll tell a quick story and it was I had my a first job that I was collecting a reasonable amount for and I didn't have a studio to shoot so I called the man and I said, Emmanuel, please, can I shoot at your studio? He said, fine, no problem, I'll rent it to you. I'm like, okay. So I, sh uh, I was so nervous and I was moving around my lights and everything, you know, and I was sweating. Like, I sweat all over my shirt. And, uh, you know, Emmanuel just looked at me and said, Tosi, your clients are coming. Is this, is this the shirt you're going to wear? So he, he went in and grabbed the shirt for me, you know, and he gave me a, a clean shirt that, I, you know, I was not sweating, just so that I could look presentable to my yeah. clients, you know. Yeah, you know, his shirts cannot size me anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you have uh, benefited so much from mentorships and professional friendships. Um, is there anything you are doing uh, to, I mean, people are looking up to you now. Is there anything you are doing in terms of mentoring other people and imparting knowledge? Yes, definitely. So I, I started this last year where I did like a one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I tried to pick maybe two people every month to a mentor for a fee of course you know for my time but I try to do that to make sure that everybody can you know there's at least there's an access to some of the knowledge that I was able to that I that took me a while to, to gather yeah so I, I do that you can reach out to me or send me an email if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one class you know some months are not available but some months are available this year and then also I plan to do a workshop uh, before March so the first quarter of this year so if you if you're interested in that you can look out for my page um, I'll definitely announce the workshop and then I plan to also do maybe some just photography hangouts you know so less formal setting where people can discuss and we can talk real figures you know this is how yeah. much I charge yeah this is how much this person charged me this is this client that is owing me money <laughs> <laughs> which this is good Yeah, you're still watching Camera Lounge and it's coming to you on the bill of Camera Joints, Nigeria's number one camera store. We've been hanging out with Tosin Janai. Hi. Thank you for staying through. Now, let's move into the business of photography. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take you from that experience that you had with Emmanuel Oyeleke. He looked at you and said, you can't be sweating. You know, you see... <laughs> And that comes from a business sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. No doubt you're a professional photographer. No doubt technically you knew what you were doing. But you were not presentable. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the little tracks that trump photographers. Yeah. So let's talk about the business of photography. Yeah. How do you transit from photographer the creative to photographer the businessman? Okay, so I'll give you two words, perceived value. Now that's very, very important because for in our line of work, especially with individual clients, we're doing like um, bespoke photography. It's not like a commercial working studio. People have to feel like they are getting value from you. And if they perceive that value, whether that value is 10 Real or, or 100, if, the if you can make them perceive it as a thousand, they will pay you for a thousand. So how do you create perceived value? It's in how you carry yourself, how you brand yourself, you know, how you dress, how you talk or over the phone, you know, the little things, what kind of invoice, how do you send your invoices to them? How do you address their emails? How do you talk to them over the phone? You know, we can go into so many details and I can mention a few, but all of these things come together to create a brand. They come together to create a brand. So when you hear different brands, when you hear Kilechi Amadi Obi, there's, there's something you think about when you hear T.Y. Brady, when you hear anybody, what, what do you want people to think about when they hear your name? Now, it's not something you can just do over one month or two months, but it's something that you want to do consistently over a period of time. Do you understand? So it's what do you push out to the public? What do you push out that clients see? And that's very, very important to what people would want to pay 
for for you for. So I've had clients that someone calls me and say, oh, Tosin, I want to I want to shoot with you earlier on, and I say, oh, I'm going to charge uh, hundred thousand naira, and say, ah, oh, that's too much. But when they call somebody else, they're willing to pay the person a million naira. It's not like they don't have the money. They just don't feel like they're getting that, that, that value. That value can come from you. That, that value from you. So as a photographer, it's very, very important when branding yourself that you are not only, apart from the value you have, you know, there's the fixed value of my pictures are good, but you have to give them, you have to sell it to them. I'm not in an obvious way that saying, ah, oh, my comments, my pictures are good. No, it's in the way that you brand yourself. You know, that's very, very important. That's the first point for business and photography. The second point is like treat your photography as a business. It is a business, treat it as a business. So send your invoices, you know, if you're going to give discounts, give the discounts, put it there. Let the client see that, oh, this thing cost two million naira, but we're giving it to you at 1.8 million. So that when they don't, when they come next time, they are not just asking for 1.8 million. So these are the little things, you know. I can't teach business of photography here, mm. but I would say attend workshops on business of photography. Learn these things, you know, ask your mentors, how do you do this? How do you handle commercial clients? Please, if you're a photographer and you're starting out, open your business accounts. It's not hard. Just open it. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose a job if you don't open it. I lost mm -hmm. mine because the first time you get a commercial client that won't pay money to your personal account, it will be too late yeah, for to you to, open, to yeah. open your open your account. So open your account, treat it, pay yourself a salary, please. Pay yourself. That's very, very important as a photographer. Yes, let, let's talk about accounting yeah. in photography. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good thing that you mentioned this, that pay yourself a salary. Some people don't understand what that means. Even <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are paying the money to, to me. me. Uh, well, so <laughs> what does pay yourself yeah. mean? So pay yourself, what it means is that it helps you to be accountable, right? So I'll just, I'll just try and give um, an explanation. If I, if I do a couple of jobs this month, and you know, I've somehow racked up um, a millionaire or two millionaire, and it's in my personal account. It's easy for me to think that, oh, I have two millionaire, I'm rich. If we go out with my friends and you know, everybody eats and the bill is 80K, like, why not? I'll pay for it. What's 80K out of two million? But what you don't understand as a photographer or creative is that your, your income is not necessarily, um, what's the word, consistent, right? So if you made two millionaire this month or five millionaire this month, doesn't mean it's easy. You, the way your brain works is that you think you're going to make five million naira next month, five million next. Month. So you spend like that. But when you pay yourself a salary, you know that I paid myself five hundred thousand naira this month. I cannot spend more than five hundred thousand naira this month. If not, I'll be in trouble. The rest of the money belongs to your business. It doesn't belong to you. There is also this perception that most creatives are not exactly able to manage businesses. Okay. First, do you agree with that? Second. Now, how does someone who is watching this say, I don't really think right now I have the intelligence to put a business together. I just want to focus on making pictures. If you are intelligent enough to be a creative, you can run the basics of your business. Mm. The very basics of it. It's plus and minus. It's not so difficult, right? But I'm thinking that at the start, most people cannot afford to bring somebody on board and say, oh, this is my accountant officer or this is the accounting person this is the person that runs the business this is the agency person you know if you can't afford that yet then you have to do it yourself at the, at the beginning but hopefully your business grows to the point where you can employ somebody and say oh this there's people that belong to creative agencies that handle everything from booking of the clients to all of that you know i was talking with a friend yesterday and he said this is your business you have to deal with people and some people can't do that right so if you can outsource it fine you know, I think that's a bit limiting, maybe. But if you can do it yourself, please. It's, it's, you can you learn photography, so you can learn how to do it. Don't try and figure it out yourself. You know, if you need to go to a training to do it, go to a training. I think Gazmadu Yagazi, she does a lot of trainings on business of photography. So l let's talk about the larger business photography or creative business environment mm -hmm. in Nigeria. What's your assessment of where photography is today? Well, I think photography is going up. It, it has definitely grown over the last four or five years. You know, that's because of the quality of photographers that are coming out of Nigeria right now. The quality is really good and that means that, you know, people want that quality and people are willing to pay more for photography. So uh, also in terms of like commercial photography, you know, brands are really hiring photographers now as opposed to before when it was just people who just grab stock images. 
remember there was a time that <laughs> you know i think two banks one had grabbed it was father's day and they had grabbed this talk image and this one has grabbed the talk image and they posted the same <laughs> image, <laughs> image of father's day and it was it was a mess but you know now people because the quality of photography is, is better you know they can hire photographers to shoot their campaigns and all of this and photographers are delivering so the industry is really getting better it's really growing i don't mind the competition at all it's good it's good for the business for people to get better and better so it's it's in a it's in a good space it's in a good space the wedding photography industry definitely was the first to really explode and it's really you know, if you want to make money in photography that's where to start weddings i feel like weddings is the easiest to to get into because you get clients easily more easily than um than commercial and portrait photography so so let's also then talk about the genres of photography yeah. that we have and the ones that are prevalent in nigeria yeah um, people have talked about aerial photography, mm -hmm. um, documentary photography, and, and stuff like that. Where do you see those growing? So now more than ever, definitely. So um, because because of the way the world is now, you know, and COVID coming and showing us that you know the world is more connected than we think. We can connect to anywhere in the world just on our smartphones. It means that. Um, other genres of photography are becoming even more. Um, what's the word now? They are becoming more relevant. So, for example, fine art photography, you know, NFTs now, it's crazy how much you can make, you know, by just selling your work online. You don't need to host physical exhibitions anymore. Somebody can buy a digital piece of art for crazy amounts of, of money. You know, people buying for one Ethereum, for one Bitcoin, for just a single piece of art that, that you created in your in your studio. So. There, there are endless possibilities now. Documentary photography has grown. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, I can mention a couple of documentary photographers in Nigeria now that are world class. You know, the people photographing the presidents, you know, there's Bayo, there's Tolani Ali, there's um, Bernard Kalu, Kabeni. There are a lot of people that are doing amazing things and they are, they are really showing Africa to the world. So the all the genres are are relevant now yeah every single genre of photography are relevant. if you want to do landscapes you can do landscapes and sell i mean the the most expensive picture of the world is just a picture one very very funny picture of a little landscape like this and it was sold for a couple million dollars so it's it's not really about i mean if you're in a, if you're in somewhere where there are not a lot of photographers in that genre i think you have an advantage mm. because you can be the pioneer there that's the way you know I, I like to look at the, the, the advantage of first responders. Yeah. And I'd like you to speak to someone who, who's hearing this and they're interested in photography. They don't have equipment, they know nobody, but they, they can sort of feel and see themselves in your shoes someday. How can they walk their journey uh, with less hustles than you had? Oh yeah, so obviously we're less hassles. <laughs> we're less hassles, but I'll, I'll say is that one, just keep shooting. Like, don't stop. Don't stop shooting, keep shooting. Because people stop shooting and they, when they're tired, like, don't stop, that's the first thing. The second thing is that allow yourself, give yourself time. You know, don't be so harsh on yourself. Don't look at somebody and say, oh, why am I not at that level yet? You know, the way growth works is organic growth takes time. You know, if, if it's real growth, sometimes it takes, a, it takes a while. So give yourself that time. You know, all you need to do is that it should say, I need to be better than my last shoot. You know, you can fall into that point where you feel like, oh, I'm not doing good enough. So I'm just going to stop. But no. So it's more like, you know, keep shooting, keep shooting. You know, little improvements each time. And then when you look back in a year's time, you're like, oh, I have improved this much, you know. Don't be afraid to experiment. That's the most important thing. When you're starting out, you, you're not so busy with clients and all of that. So experiment, shoot every single genre you can, you know, because you don't really know what you what you like yet. Trust me, you do. You might think you do, but you don't. So shoot every genre. You, I, I thought I was going to be like a beauty fashion photographer, but I'm, I'm not that at all now because I really like the fine art photography. So uh, listen to yourself. Do whatever you want to do, mm. you know. If you can afford workshops, attend workshops that are good workshops, they would help you. Apart from the knowledge you'll learn, you you would get to meet other photographers, you get to meet you know, your mentors and they can help you grow. 
All right, I was going to put in a question, but the producer says we must take a break. So we'll okay. do that. And when we come back, Tosi will be talking about his positioning in Nigeria's photography industry. That's in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're still on to Camera Lounge and it's brought to you by Camera Joints, Nigeria's number one camera store. And we've been hanging out with Tosin Junaid. Yes. Tosin, so <laughs> let's talk about the philosophy of your work. Okay. And your, what do you consider your own identity in the photography industry? Okay, so um, first I'd just like to mention that it's important for you to have have a style, kind of. It sets you apart, you know. So people have an idea of what they get when they come to you. It makes you different, and it also makes you be able to charge a lot of money because nobody else can create like you can create. So for me, um, I like to show the African woman as strong and powerful. I like to show them as I like to show them in an artistic way. You know, I think if I photograph you, then I want you to be able to put it on the wall basically. So, you know, what I'm going for in my head is, you know, let it be like um, one of the great painters of, <laughs> of like you know, Picasso's. of the Picasso painted me. That's how, that's where I'm going in terms of like what, the way I want my portraiture to look like. Yes. But I'm very mindful of infusing Africanism or African elements in the way my pictures are. So I use those elements like the dark skin, I like to use our kinky short hair or I like to use, you know, the afro or head ties, you know, those things that really show, show us as African because sometimes it's easy to get carried away because we learned photography or, you know, when we start photography, we're looking at the Western world and it's easy to get carried away with what they portray in their photography. So I believe in, you know, learn the methods, but bringing our own culture mm. to it. But I'd like to tell people that if you're trying to create your style, be patient. It's not something that happens overnight. Just keep experimenting. Don't be afraid to try new things. And then you start to, so you start to see a pattern and then you can follow that pattern. So sometimes people are able to know when they hit it. Was, was that your experience? So yeah, there's a particular image I shot. It was one of my experiments. I was like, you know what? After that image, I was like, okay, these are the elements that I put together to create this. So it's like someone that wants to cook a recipe of jello fries. Yeah. And then you finally hit it. Like, okay, wait, wait, wait. How many cups of pepper did I add here? You know, it's funny, but it was something like that. But now I try to now make create different variants of those kind of images that I feel like are very, very striking and powerful. All right, so now you've talked about your niche, your identity, the philosophy about your work. Let's have you talk us through some of these fantastic, I mean, iconic, I call them, images that uh, Tosin Junaid has made. Talk us through this particular beautiful black lady. This is part of like my personal project that I'm creating that hopefully we can sell as part of an exhibition. Oh. So you see, um, what we did was we used um, African cowries and you know the feathers, and we tied the ghillie on her head yeah. to make her. And then we also lights in such a way to make it even more striking. Have you sold this? No, not yet. Are, are you planning to? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this next one. Yeah. So it, if you look at it, you see it's the same idea and the same concept. So that's what I'm saying is that yeah, I have in my head what I want to create. So you see the elements that I'm coming back to. You see African yeah. hairstyle. Yeah. Right? You see the prints is wearing. And they look like stuff that will have <laughs> like an endless shelf life. Exactly. That's what I go for. So it's something that you, I want to create images that you can look at 10, 15, 20 years from time and, and they still look good. They yeah, say, these, oh, these, these are like, yeah. this is like, like an African goddess. Exactly. So I'm not sure the person as a queen or as a as a goddess really. That's the word. Or as a god, <laughs> you know. So the uh, hair is a crown. The hair is very important to me, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah, hair is very important. So I like hair. I like um, short hair. I show people that are bald as well because I feel like you know we Africans. This is our hair. Let's let's embrace it and accentuate so it. So I like to show 
how beautiful it can be. So uh, let's move into the technicalities a bit. How did you make this? Uh, let's begin with the, the backdrop. You know, um, there are plain canvases. Did you paint the the tree shadows and, and stuff like that? Or did you, did so, you acquire this? So what I do is that you, sometimes I superimpose other pictures into the backdrop to make it look that way. There are backdrops that you can buy that have this painterly effects, but the problem with those is that they are limiting. So once you use them, you know, you and don't someone want... else might acquire it. Yeah, so you don't want to use them again. But what you can do is you can shoot your own personal. So if you find landscapes, you can shoot and then you can superimpose. And there are also places where you can buy pictures that you would use to superimpose. There are places where they are completely free that they give to artists to use to create their own work as well. So, all right. Yeah, one of those. So now let's see what's in your bag that you've been using <laughs> to create these stunning images. Okay, so I'm going to bring my bag like right up here now. Yeah. And great. It's a Manfrotto bag. Nice, nice bag. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, the content of my bag has changed, just changed recently. So, um, but some of the things still remain yeah, I mean, the same. Tastes do change. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, I shoot Nikon. I'm a Nikon guy. Oh, I see. Nikon guy all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I see your wow. Canon camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an icon guy, so yeah. um, we'll stay in our hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I shoot the uh, um, Nikon Z6 or Z6. Oh, great. Yeah, uh, I've shot it for. This is the first time I'm handling. Hand yeah, handling this Nikon mirrorless. Yeah, it's it's a good camera. I uh, I've always shot Nikon, so somehow I've not shot Canon or Sony, any of the other Do brands. Do you plan to change anything? I just invested in Icon Glass, so maybe you know. <laughs> At least yeah. not in the next five years. Uh, no, not, not anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, not for any reason, Pascal. My first camera was Nikon. I really liked them and I just stuck with them. And mm. yeah, I, I like the way they designed their cameras. It's oh, yeah. more of a feeling thing for me as opposed to. It's so more, it's more emotional than logical, would you say that? Uh, you wouldn't put it that way. I wouldn't put it that way, but there's an emotional connection, definitely an emotional connection to Nikon. Wow. Yeah, I really like them. Well, this is awesome. Mm, this is elegant. Yeah, so that's a 14 to 24, 2.8. It's a new lens just bought from camera joint. <laughs> ah, camera <laughs> joint. It's a 14 to 24. Uh, I've always wanted like the wide angle professional zoom in my lens cap. In I my don't want to hear that sound, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yep, uh, so that's the camera. I've had it since 24 to what is this? It's a 14 to 24. 14 to 24. Yeah, two that's, that must be a wide yeah, angle. Very lens, wide, yeah, very wide, very uh, wide. It's more of like a professional lens, you know. I, I want to have it in my bag, so I bought it. And yeah. um, this is my Nifty 50. So this is a 50 yeah. 1.8G. I've had this, you can see it's really quite beat up. I've had it since 2016. I, it doesn't look as beat up like some I've seen. <laughs> I mean, the rubber is gone, but it's a very good lens. Wow. It shot quite a, a lot of my portraits. So <coughs> this is just to prove to you that it's not about, I mean, gear is important, but you know, you can get great stuff with whatever you have. Mm. So just lean towards the strength of your gear. Mm. So I'm not trying to blow the background into milkiness with this, because yeah. I know it wouldn't work. Mm. So I'll use it where I know it would work. And then um, what else do I have here? I have a 105 Macro 2.8. Mm. This is also new from Camera Joint. So I said I got uh. some new stuff just now. I, I used to have a 105 1.4. But it was a Sigma lens and it wasn't like a native mirrorless lens. So I, I just traded it for this one. So this is a macro lens. Uh, I plan to shoot some weddings this year. So I need this for details. I also have a 35 1.4 that I use for events mostly. But this is a Sigma, so it has the adapter. Fit so that you can fit into the mirrorless the Nikon. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is that. I think that's all my all my lenses. So I, I see I see a range here. Yes. You're you're more like a range person who you want to get to location or in studio. You don't want to be limited by no, anything. I don't. So because I have, I have from fourteen all the way to one oh five. You're covered the entire range. Yes I am. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes I am covered the entire range. All right, so this is very interesting. If you are a portrait photographer, fine art photographer, you've seen uh, what the professional is using. Tosin tonight, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Program. Camera so Lounge much. and Camera Join. Uh, we're happy to have you thank on you the so show. Much. And thank you for sharing your thoughts, your experiences, 
and we appreciate your impact. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you very kindly. All right, so that's the show for today. We've had Tosin Junaid with us on the couch at the lounge. Uh, this is Camera Lounge coming to you from Camera Joint, Nigeria's number one camera store. For me, Kai Dialandi, it's goodbye. Lights, camera, action. Thank you.